Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of our Tech Tuesday webinar series. My name is Kevin Marheine, and I am the moderator for our Tech Tuesday webinar series. I'm uh, the digital marketing manager here at Cortex Services. Uh, and today we have David Frey, who will be sort of guiding us through the, the semi-confusing world of Microsoft Teams voice licensing. Uh, but before I hand it over to, uh, to David to run through the presentation he's prepared for us today, just a couple of quick housekeeping items. Um, as always, as we're going through the uh, presentation today. If you do have any questions, please feel free to submit those using the GoToWebinar interface. Uh, we will have a time at the end of the presentation to go over a couple of quick questions. Um, and then, as always, we will be sending out a recording and the presentation uh, following the completion of today's um, webinar. It usually takes uh, a little while for the recording to become available, so we'll either be having that out to you this afternoon um, or at the latest, depending on when the webinar is made, uh, when the recording is made available to us early tomorrow morning. So uh, that will be in your inboxes shortly. Um, with that being said, uh, that really takes care of everything that I need to on the housekeeping side. So David, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you and, and let you walk us through the presentation you've prepared today. Thanks, Kevin, and welcome everyone to this edition in our uh, series. Today, we're just going to talk a little bit about Microsoft Teams voice licensing. And um, sorry for the color commentary from the dog in the background. It's the remote world that we live in. Um, so just a little bit of uh, introductory information related to Teams and, and how Microsoft has brought this platform together to provide um, a platform for us to collaborate with multiple work groups across multiple regions. And what we've seen, and, and Microsoft has captured here, is that um, we're seeing multiple generations in the workforce today all working together and a focus is becoming more and more team-based and collaborative type of a, a, a work group approach. Across the globe this, this statistic is a little dated, it's much higher now especially with the uh, uh, the pandemic and a, a lot of additional people working remotely but Microsoft was predicting 72% of workers would be working remotely by 2020. And again, that number has grown. But when we start looking at it from, at Teams as uh, uh, a solution to provide unified communications, um, it, it just addresses a need for a modern voice solution for, for businesses today. And so Microsoft developed what they call enterprise voice for the cloud where you you have microsoft teams as the client you have the phone system which is microsoft's uh, cloud-based pbx kind of equivalent if you will there's an audio conferencing component that we'll talk about as well and then how do we get that dial tone to the user there are two methods for that and we will go into those in a little more detail here in a minute the Teams user experience is really good and really seamless. And um, we here at Cortec, we use Teams every single day. Um, I personally use Teams for making and receiving calls to outside users that are, are not part of the our, our Teams and, uh, environment and, and so forth. Um, but when we when we when we talk about taking the phone system and say, okay, I've got traditional PBX or traditional phones with just lines coming in, PSTN lines, which is the public switch telephone network lines coming in from a, a local or regional carrier. What does that look like to to go away from that to Microsoft's enterprise voice solution? And so what we're going to talk about is the, some of the licenses that we need to put in place and then what that looks like from a calling plan or direct routing um, perspective. 
I mentioned audio conferencing. Audio conferencing is the capability to have a phone number automatically inserted into a Teams meeting when users create a meeting. It provides the uh, audience with an option to dial in from a phone as opposed to having to use the uh, the team's client to join a meeting. And uh, it, we'll see that sometimes where they're, they may have some kind of coverage issue and they're not getting a good experience with their internet connection, so they'll dial in. But we also see it where uh, folks will join the meeting from the team's client um, for the, the visual or video presentation, but they'll dial in for the audio because maybe they don't have a, uh, a headset connected to their laptop while they're traveling or something like that. So um, that's what audio conferencing is in a nutshell. And you'll see the, the licensing costs and how that, what that looks like here when we get to that in just a few moments. Microsoft also introduced what they call calling plans. And calling plans are their, is Microsoft's solution for having an actual phone line associated with a user. And it includes a certain number of minutes for inbound and outbound calling. Microsoft also developed what's called direct routing, and this is would be similar to what you may have today in your environment where you've got a SIP trunk or SIP trunk delivered from your carrier, connected into equipment and bridged into your on-premise PBXs, for example. And the calling, the, the direct routing, when it comes through Microsoft partner like Cortec, you'll see that we've got uh, options related to basically bundles of minutes per month. And, and there's a slide that we'll get to toward the end of the conversation that illustrates kind of the difference between the, using the calling plan approach and uh, direct routing from really from a budgetary standpoint. Microsoft also has a communication credit uh, requirement to cover certain things that are not included in the uh, audio conferencing or uh, calling plans. So this is where you basically prepay into a bucket by a credit card and it automatically renews. And you see some of the, the, the places where that would, those charges would apply to communication credits. For example, you have a toll-free number associated with um, your audio conferencing. So when users dial, you know, when they get the meeting request, they, they see a toll-free number or a toll-free number that's associated with your um, team's voice solution for users to dial into your company and, and so forth. Now these, there are four core licenses uh, related to Teams voice as a solution. First and foremost is the phone system license. This is what gives you the ab ability to use that dial-in dial-out capability from Teams. It is a required license in, in order to enable that functionality. Audio conferencing is not necessarily required, but we find that the majority of organizations that we work with do like to provide dial-in capabilities for users potentially outside their organization or even inside their organization to be able to join meetings via uh, just a standard voice call. Mentioned the Microsoft calling plans. There are two, uh, two types, domestic and international available. And the list of countries is, uh, is growing exponentially that Microsoft is adding services in. Direct routing is, as I mentioned, uh, available as an alternative to calling plans through a Microsoft partner like Cortex Services. It also provides enterprise scalability anywhere from a handful of users to thousands, tens of thousands of users. It is also a requirement as the only option to bring Teams voice capability and bridge that into your on-premise PBX equipment. Now we get to the, the subject of the licenses. There are, in essence, two approaches to uh, uh, purchasing and adding Teams voice licensing capabilities. For organizations of 300 or fewer people, you may already be using one of these licenses that you see listed here. Uh, let's say, for example, you've got 
50 users with uh, Microsoft 365 Business Standard, and you want to add phone capabilities for those users, Microsoft introduced earlier this year what they call Microsoft 365 Business Voice. And at the bottom of the, the slide, you see it's an add-on of $20 per user per month, includes the required phone system license, it includes the audio conferencing license, and it includes the US domestic calling plan. Beyond the uh, Microsoft 365 business tier, perhaps you're on the enterprise tier with your current licenses, or you'd be looking at going to the enterprise tier when you migrate to Teams and adopt the Office 365 suite and, and so forth. And that, what that looks like here is the, the two licenses, the phone system license and the audio conferencing license. You can see $8 per user per month, $4 per user per month are included in the E5 tier, and this is both the Office 365 and Microsoft, e, Microsoft 365 E5 tier. They are not included with the E1 and E3 tiers, so the, but they are available as add-on licenses. And then either calling plans or direct routing are required in addition to those licenses to enable your PSTN, uh, direct inward and direct outward bound dialing. And then I did mention the calling plans. The US domestic calling plan is $12 per user per month. Domestic and international calling plans, $24 per user per month. And these uh, sample prices that are listed on the slide here are based on the commercial cloud subscription pricing. Um, if you are an education or nonprofit customer or government cloud customer with Microsoft, those prices may vary from what you see on this slide. Now, when we stop and look at, okay, when what, what if I just go ahead and say, I want calling plans for my 200 user company, what's that look like? Well, it's $12 per user per month times 200 is $2,400 per month. Each calling plan includes up to 3,000 minutes. They are pooled across all the users on your three, Office 365 or Microsoft 365 tenant. And you can see that's a really big number of minutes. And what we find is the majority of organizations that work with that we work with don't go anywhere near 3,000 minutes per user. So direct routing gives us an option, even if we're not talking about uh, connecting session border controllers on to on-premise uh, PBX equipment, for example, or other on-premise hardware, voice hardware. Direct routing can give us an alternative to the calling plans to where it might be more budget friendly. So in that first example, uh, you see the direct routing example for 50,000 pooled US domestic minutes with direct routing service charges included at approximately $1,400 per month and then two cents per minute for any uh, minutes consumed over 50,000. So you can see that $1,000 less per month can make a significant difference, especially for a small business. Um, and then the second example, the 100,000 pool domestic minute plan, roughly $2,000 per month with the extra minutes billed at eight, uh, 1.8 cents per minute. These are sample pricing. If you were to engage with Cortec to look at a plan that would work for your organization, you would see uh, very carefully estimated and exact numbers related to that. Um, there's not a lot to the licensing, but we did wanna take a few minutes to just put this out there for you to just illustrate the different licenses, how you can obtain them and, and what it, just what it looks like. And there are many different scenarios that we see where with uh, organizations that want to move to a cloud-based phone solution. In some cases, it's actually replacing, removing uh, traditional phone system or PBXs on-premise and moving to cloud only. In others, it's moving from a uh, Microsoft competing solution 
where the customer adopted a, a voice over IP solution maybe several years ago, and they want to move to Teams because Teams is actually built into their Office 365 subscription. So we can add the voice capability on top of that. And it, 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 in many cases, it becomes a, uh, a cost savings or cost offset opportunity. Now, um, I know we went through this information fairly quickly, but again, that the, we just wanted to put this out in terms of the phone system license, what, what the auto conferencing license is, and what are, what are your options for going to adding, adding voice capabilities for your users. So that does bring us to a close for the presentation, and we'll just go ahead and open it up for the Q&A. Great, thank you, David. Um, taking a look here at some questions. Um, <clears throat> specifically, uh, one question here is just saying, um, asking what, what the best way is to know which license you currently have active when it comes to your, your particular office. How can, how can someone go about figuring out uh, which one of those buckets they may already fall into? Okay, so one way you could do that is just simply sign on to, the, to your tenant um, you can go to admin.microsoft.com or even portal.office.com, sign on. Uh, this would require you to be an admin on your tenant. Go to the billing section in the Office 365 administration portal and expand that and you can click on licenses and you can see what licenses are currently assigned on your tenant. Great. Um, a question sort of similar is just uh, in terms of you're your looking to get started here, just uh, how does one get started with Teams Voice? That's a great question, Kevin. And um, it, it, it it depends on a couple of things. It, do you, all, does one already have an Office 365 subscription um, that includes Teams? And um, all of those in the slides that we showed you do include the Teams Teams capabilities, then um, having a conversation with a uh, Teams voice provider uh, partner like Cortex Services, and uh, we would then provide you with some more details in terms of, uh, just to, so you can make an informed decision on what the best approach is for you to add that capability. Um, it can be as simple as saying, I have three users, I wanna move them to Teams voice, put you on, uh, you would you would then uh, go ahead and purchase three three domestic or international domestic calling plans, assuming we're talking about US-based users, or if they're users that are, are, are uh, based in one of the other countries where Microsoft offers the uh, calling plan as an option, or we have a conversation around direct routing and how to, uh, how, how to get that set up for you and what that looks like going forward. Fantastic. And then the last question that I have here at the moment is really um, what is sort of the advantage of partnering with someone like Cortec as opposed to just working with Microsoft directly when it comes to Teams Voice? Like what is what is our sort of value add that we add in there um, that someone's not going to get if they try and, and you know, not, not a partner? How do, how do we help them get the most out of their investment? Sure. Um, that's going to be a combination, uh, or I, I, I maybe tiered. You know, if we're talking uh, in the context of a, a small business, small, medium-sized business, that conversation may start with somebody reached out to Microsoft, and then Microsoft refers you to a partner like Cortex Services, and we provide that uh, expertise and that trusted partner um, relationship to not only answer your questions, but to be here when you have uh, ongoing uh, service needs, you need to add one or two more users or a hundred more users and so forth. Um, that fits our, 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 our model very well from um, the cloud service provider or CSP perspective. From an enterprise perspective, a lot of times the licensing is being purchased directly from Microsoft through uh, an enterprise agreement that would cover your, say, E3 or E5, and if it's E3, it would be the add-on licenses for um, the uh, phone system and audio conferencing. 
But again, those would be through the EA, but Cortec would provide the phone service through direct routing. So in that case, we partner directly with Microsoft and it's not them or Cortec, it's us working together on, on your behalf. Fantastic. So it looks like, and I'm just double checking here, but it looks like that is it for questions so far. Um, as mentioned, we will be sending out this slide deck uh, so you have it available to you, um, as well as the recording from today's webinar once it has become available. Uh, we have everything uploaded in, in the emails get sent out either this afternoon or tomorrow morning again just depending on how things sort of play out with uh, the recordings availability um, but uh, David I know you just tossed up here a slide talking a little bit about Cortex services and, and some of our um, credentials and, and things like that but um, one thing that will be added in here to the slide for everyone uh, when we send out the slide deck is just a, just a way to get in contact with us um, you know, obviously you can head to cortech.com um, and there's a uh, schedule a meeting button on the website that is, is a really easy way to get a hold of us, but we will put in a, uh, a slide here that helps just direct you towards a spot where if you're interested in, in potentially seeing what uh, Cortech could do uh, in terms of, of helping you with your Microsoft Teams adoption, whether it be, uh, again, leveraging, getting the most out of your, your Microsoft Teams voice licensing or, or really just with Microsoft Teams in general, um, you know, we'll we'll have that in there, and then I'm sure David and David and team would love to have the opportunity to to work with you and, and take a look um, and, and see how we might be able to um, partner with you to help you really get the value out of out of your system. So sure, and Kevin, we do. I, I should have mentioned this uh, to the question about how to get started. Uh, Cortec does offer a proof of concept uh, solution to where you would have a, up to a certain number of users that you would get uh, phone system licenses uh, uh, assigned to, and you'd be able to kick the tires and try it out with, while you're making that decision to migrate from your current voice solution to Microsoft Teams voice. So, um, and then the actual migration side of it, I should have also mentioned that involves uh, you you can keep your current phone numbers and we will take care of the number porting on your behalf. So that's part of uh, the service offering as well. Fantastic. Yeah, I know that uh, certainly sounds like we, we do a lot of the heavy lifting there to make sure that everything sort of seamlessly goes uh, if you decide to make that uh, transition from a, a more you know physical based system to, uh, to moving into the cloud so um, yeah I think that will do it for us here today um, as mentioned you know again we will be sending out the recording and the slide deck so uh, whether you're watching this uh, here live with us today or if you're checking out the recording on demand we just want to thank you again for, for taking the time and, and being interested in the topic here uh, we will be back again next week doing a, another Tech Tuesday webinar. That one is going to be focused on Azure migrations. Um, so if you are interested there, uh, you'll be seeing invites go out for that here later on this week. Um, but should be another good topic uh, next week with uh, our Director of Cloud Operations, uh, Clint Adkins will be leading that one. But uh, David, just want to thank you for taking the time today to walk everybody through the presentation here and, and speak to uh, the Microsoft Teams voice licensing. Um, and thank everybody for taking the time to, to join us here today, and uh, we'll catch you during the next webinar. Thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful afternoon.